Yeah, go ahead. Whatever okay. make it easier. Okay, perfect. So with this being said, it's 24 weeks. So what that looks like is um, six months. So just with the demonstration, I'll just go through that one more time. Today is May the 1st. Let's just say that, right? I have May, June, July, October, November, December to move forward with this, okay? So what that looks like is that, um, well, I'm sorry, October, okay? In regards to that. Um, I have until that time frame, okay? And so um, we have, you have, in the past, if you had your loan from PPP draw one that was produced in the spring of 2020, you have from June the 2020 to have done that, okay? So with that being said, um, with that being said, um, that you only had a stipulation of eight weeks for it to be covered. So they were very generous in regards to that, okay? That was very, very generous in regards to that to possibly be able to extend that from eight. They noticed that eight weeks, if you're getting $20,000, right? Or if you're getting $10,000, you don't have that time frame, okay? So because of the fact that you don't have that time frame, right? You, they extended it from eight weeks and triple the amount, okay? So if you, so in regards to that, give me one. So that's perfect. So let's move forward. So what is included in the payroll cost? So what is included in the payroll cost is your salaries that can be included, your wages, your commission, and also um, paid to owner, okay? So with that being said, that can be, okay, you pay yourself. If you are an S corporation, of course we know that that is through paying yourself the wages. If you are a LLC, a single male LLC, or just a DBA, or it's just you, that's just literally pay yourself with owner withdrawal, okay? Not so much of a fancy payroll system like Gusto or um, QuickBooks or ADP or Paydex. You don't have to do all of that for this stipulation of forgiveness. With that being said, let's move forward. Okay. And so this is more so to the area of what we were speaking about. So they're giving you 2.5 months. That's how you get the calculation, okay, of what you receive. Um, okay, let's move forward. Employee costs. If you are paying yourself employee health care benefits and things to that nature, then that will be a particular situation. So what else includes payroll? Uh, retirement plans employee state and local taxes, okay? But that doesn't include unemployment. With that being said, it's the exclude from payroll. It's the compensation. So let's talk about 60% and what that looks like. It's highly, highly, highly recommended for you no. to, it's highly, highly recommended for you to pay yourself food. Check. You can do it through a wire transfer, but I highly recommend through a, a check. With that check, it will be it will be a check. If you don't have one, you can go to Walmart um, and get a check from that. Okay. And Walmart, I'll send a link in the chat where you'll be able to access. Let's just say your bank, you have an online bank, and because of the fact that you have an online bank, they haven't sent you checks. Well, you want the most affordable check. So you can go to walmart.checks and you can get it for $7 or go to your local bank. They give you temporary. But I recommend as being an accountant, a check because it's a written paperwork document that at any time that you want to pull it up from your bank, they'll actually be able to pull it up from your bank. So 60%, let's do a calculation. All right, so in my calculator, I made $50,000, I made $50,000, right? That's what I'm going to have on my schedule C. So $50,000, we're going to divide that by 12, and we're going to times that by 
That's how much I made last year. Let's just say that. You divide that by 12. On average, that's about, one second, $50,000 divided by 12. That is about $4,166.67. If you times that by 2.5, I will end up getting $10,000. $416.68. So me receiving that amount of money um, would be my loan amount. So if I get $10,000, let's just say flat, 60% of that is $6,000. $6,000 you have to pay yourself for about six months. $6,000 you have to pay yourself for six months. So if you wanted to pay yourself $1,000 each month, you can do that right? And exhaust the requirement of this loan. But on average, you get paid about $4,000 per month on a $50,000 income, right? Reporting on your Schedule C. I wouldn't recommend paying yourself more than the threshold, which is $4,100 if you're making $50,000 in a year, because how they divided that number was by 12. And that's pretty much what that looks like. So with this being said, you have a 40% requirement. OK, 40 percent requirement of what you receive. If you want to pay yourself the full amount, you can provide a, the full amount OK, to yourself at 100 percent because it's called the payroll protection fund. They want to make sure that you are getting paid through payroll. So they're willing to allow 100 percent of the money. However, 40 percent is only allowed out of the 100 percent to be for your business expense. So if you're in the notary business, that will be a part, that will be a printer, they are expensive, a scanner, a computer, gas, transportation, even, hey, we did a lot of this in our home office. Those are the things that you can use this loan for, okay? So eligibility costs paid and crew. So in regards to that, non-payroll costs, some people say, well, you know, can I pay myself? Can I go get a new car in regards to this? Well, those are some of the things that they don't want people to do. They don't want you to go buy a brand new car, buy a brand new house with this money, um, because it's not for that. It's particularly for your business, and including your business. Okay, so what else? So with that being said, here is an example of the application, okay? The application is a one-page application if you made $150,000 or less. Um, if your loan amount was $150,000, you have a one-page application. And it's very, very simple. This, pay, this sheet is driven from the SBA website, okay? So being driven from the SBA website is pretty much simple. So right here, it's pretty much asking for um, your legal entity name that you found, um, if it was a B DBA, what is your business address that you put? All of this stuff, it will be seen on your Schedule C. Your Nexus code is going to be seen on your Schedule C. Your EIN number is going to be on your Schedule C. So you never want to blank out, like, what do I supposed to put here? It's on your Schedule C of how you filed your loan the first time. It's going to be your SBA PPP loan number that you already assigned, your lender number, the amount of the loan. In that example, if I made $50,000, my loan amount was going to be $10,466.68. I will put the exact dollar amount. And if you ever forget, you can log on to the initiated A10 Capital, our dashboard, if you go through us, to obtain this information. It will be available for you. So in regards to that, how many employees? Everyone had one if you filled out this loan, okay? In the cover period, when did you get the loan, okay, into the amount where 24 months was? How long did it take you to use the loan, okay? So that's the period. So with that being said, you would just fill out what was the payroll cost? 60%, we all know that was minimum. However, if the case was that you used the $10,466.68, you'll put that amount here, and therefore, that is the amount that you're requesting for forgiveness. Okay, next. So this is very crucial. People ask us all the time. Well, when will I know exactly? When will I get the form? Is this the form for me to fill out? The one that they actually have. 
Well, the form that you actually have, the, the form that you actually have is going to be the one from 18 Capital or your particular lender. They have up to 10 months from the date of your expiration of the 24 weeks. So in other words, if I got 10,000 now approximately, and I exhaust it in about, let's just say six weeks, right? I pay myself um, the first of every month within six weeks, I exhausted my $10,000. You are ready for forgiveness, right? But that doesn't mean the lender that approved you through the SBA is ready to send out the application, right? The standard application from the SBA website is what I will put in the link, okay? Or you can provide from the notary PPP website under forgiveness resources. With that being said, please, this is the most critical thing. Please be patient with your lender. They have 10 months after the 24 for them to send you over their application. The application can be by paper, or most of the time it will be online through the link that the lender send to you, okay? If you have any questions, feel free to contact us at info at notaryppp.com. And I will open it up for questions if you have questions, but I will also share my screen to show you where the application is. Okay, cool. So I got a, I got a question. So as far as like the forgiveness part, is it possible to have the full loan forgiven? So to get the full loan forgiven, it's a lot of misconceptions. Mm. Yes. If you do the right thing, if you listen to the video that I just presented on, if you don't go ahead and use it for outside of business expense, you can have the whole entire thing forgiven. Once again, it's like a stimulus, a grant for your business. So for example, um, if you going to go buy groceries and groceries is not a part of your business, well, maybe that part won't get forgiven. So you really have to make sure that you're using the funds as they are provided for. Cool. Now it can like, is the application to fill out for the forgiveness, is it is it pretty simple or is it like something I gotta get an accountant for? No, the application for forgiveness is very, very much so simple. So let me just give you a, sneak peek. So this is the notary PPP website. Okay, let's show it one more time. Okay, so this is the notary PPP website. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so you would literally go to loan forgiveness resources. Okay. If you scroll down, it tells you all of some articles that are very helpful that I have read through over the last months. And I felt that they were very helpful. But also note that this is the application if your loan is under 150. The exact form is called 3508S, okay? That they're calling for under 150. If it's over 150K for the loan amount that you got approved for, it's called the 3508EZ, okay? So you just click here and then it's going to go to this form, okay? And that's the form that was in the PowerPoint of what it really looks like. And it's just a one pager. Mm. All of the rest of the pages are just information, instructions, information. So that's pretty much what it is. I think you said as long as it's under what, 100,000 or 150,000? Yes, it's a one pager only if it's under, under 150,000 that your loan amount was. And your max, if you make 100,000, your, your loan amount can only be $20,833. Your max at that cap. So like in your experience, what, what are some of the misuses? I know you were mentioning the vehicle, um, but so what are some of like the misuses that you've seen people use for like, okay, I'll just lay it out there. 
boom, I get the PPP loan, right? I'm scouring for some real estate property. Now it's not part of my notary agency. Hey, I, I wanna move on this piece of property is a steal. Can I use that money and buy myself a piece of property with it? <laughs> that would be no. Okay. It's not, it's not <laughs> meant for that, okay? It's not meant for you to go ahead and buy a property. It's not mm. meant for you to go buy a new vehicle, but it is meant to help your vehicle maintenance as a notary, vehicle maintenance is important. If we don't have a vehicle, we can't be a mobile notary, right? And so it's pretty much, if you need repairs on your office, your home office, yes, those are things that you are using it for, but you cannot go ahead and get an apartment because you have a down payment. You wanna live in this area, you want this house. No, that's not what the PPP was made for. So you saying I couldn't put a jacuzzi in my home office? Absolutely not. Damn. They will <laughs> ask later. They will ask later where did you use the funds? Writing the check of what you used the funds for. Um, having your bank statement as proof of where these funds came within those time periods. Um, it's just like anything, like your taxes. T doing your taxes. You have seven years to keep your taxes before they audit you. It's the same with the PPP. Use the funds rightly and you don't have to worry about anything later. So, and, and, and excuse my questioning on that. It's, I'm, I'm just really trying to figure things out, right? So let's just say that that same scenario, I use some of the PPP, I purchase a real estate investment. The real estate investment is generating positive cash flow where, okay, I know I'm not going to get my loan forgiven, but I can afford to pay back that loan because I made this sound investment. Is that cool? Or like, am so I gonna be, is, or the feds so are gonna be knocking on my door? So for example, for some reason, um, all of your funds wasn't forgiven or none of them, you have, 1% of interest on the loan and you mm -hmm. have a period of time to pay the loan back, gotcha. which they make it very affordable in the worst scenario. And and 1%, that's like super cheap, super cheap. Um, yeah, if you guys have any questions, type in your questions or if you wanna go live, raise your hand and you can go live with us. Um, yeah, this is great, Renee, because those were burning questions. I, I didn't know the answer to, and you're giving me a lot of clarity on that. So um, the moral of the story is 60% is what you have to pay yourself of whatever the loan amount is. 40% is only what you can use for business expense. But for some reason, you want to pay yourself 80 and use 20% for that. You can do that. But the minimum is only literally 60% to pay yourself. And that does also cover payroll, right? The 60% is payroll. So for okay. example, if you use it in the opposite way, 60% mm -hmm. on your business expense and you only paid yourself 40%, mm -hmm. the loan won't be totally forgiven. That's not what the guidelines was. It was the reverse. So it's very critical for you to re rewind this video um, to really read and go to our website because it's 60% paying yourself in a check format or doing a wire transfer, but I highly recommend a check and you put owners withdraw, 60% of that. And it depends on how you want to pay yourself. There's no requirement stipulation. Do I have to pay myself um, the full amount now in month one or in month six? There's no stipulation. It's how you do your business. So if you want to spread it out in six months, a thousand each month, you can do that. If you want it all up front, you can do that also. Okay, got a question on Facebook. Um, are non-payroll costs like mortgage costs or electrical electric bills that occur before the cover period or the alternate covered period but it's throwing me off a little bit. Um, is that eligible for loan forgiveness? So I'll reshare my screen on the PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. Give me one 
So did like like for this loan, and we'll go get back to that question in a second. But like for this loan, I can use it to expand my business as well. Yes, and that's okay. the that's the most amazing thing about this loan, and especially about being a notary, because that's what it's for. It's mm -hmm. for those things that you've been holding on for for a while. I know that in businesses, printers. Sometimes it's easier just to go buy a new printer than maintenance it. It's going mm -hmm. to cost the same amount. I know, especially with a brother's printer. A brother's printer is amazing. But the moment that a brother's printer goes out, try to call the mechanic person. Or try to call brothers. They're going to say the part alone and the labor for someone else, you might as well just buy a new printer. This is what it does. So for example, there's notaries that want a printer in their vehicle. They want a mobile office. Well, yeah. the converter itself, the extra double their equipment, it's expensive. It can cost you over a thousand to two thousand, even if you want a solar generator, right? Those things are business expense. Forty percent of that you can pay yourself. Hmm. I mean, forty percent of that you can use for business expense. The 60, you can't. So let's just say, I want to use all of it for business expenses. You can't. So one of the questions was non-payroll costs. Can you read that question one more time? Yeah. So are non-payroll costs like mortgage or electrical bills uh, that occurred before the cover period or alternate covered period be eligible for loan forgiveness? So whatever you pay for it during the time of when you received it are eligible. So if there's a bill that you need to pay now, mm -hmm. you can pay that when you get the doc, when you get the funds. It's about documenting it in real time. So on the screen, it says electrical, it says gas, it says water, transportation, telephone. So those are the things that you can use in real time. So it says interest paid on debt incurred before February 15th, 2020, that is mortgage by real or mortgage property. Yes, that is considered business expense, but it cannot go before that time frame because they made this loan available for businesses that were in business during that time frame. I hope that answered your question. Cool. Okay, here go another one off of Facebook. Should I include employer health insurance and retirement contributions if I'm self-employed? So most self-employment, they do not include that because that comes with like an S corporation. So if you pay yourself through an S corporation and as an as an employer, mm -hmm. you will that is more directed towards that. So in the as employer being an S corporation or a corporation, then you're going to pay one, your employees, and then they're going to pay part portion of their health too. So as a sole proprietor, that's not the stipulation that you're required or you have to focus on as a single member LLC or a sole proprietor. But if you are a single member LLC and you hire someone as a salary or a hourly worker, then mm. that will be required, mm. not a subcontractor. So I run an agency, I'm a corporation. If I have salary employees or hourly employee, yes, that will be applicable for my corporation. However, if I'm not paying those, then that will not be part of the 60% that has to be payroll. So imagine if you work the W-2 job, right? they're giving you a huge uh, discount on healthcare benefits and retirement pen pension. Sometimes they're matching that. Well, as a corporation or if you providing that as an LLC or LP, then yes, that portion of it will be part of the 60% of payroll. Mm. Interesting. So let me ask you this. So as far as marketing and advertising, right? Um, I can yes. use about 40% of that towards my marketing, um, you know, events, like whatever I'm 
promoting and stuff like that, Facebook ads, YouTube ads, Google ads, I can use 40% of that PPP. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. That's, that's yeah. great. Yes. So I know. And is, that, that, is that considered forgiven? Yes. It's business ah. expense. So let's go back to us. Let's go back to here. This is what I'm hearing that I need to show people a schedule mm -hmm. C. And what is a schedule C? A Schedule C is literally a profit and loss statement. Mm -hmm. And it tells you, what do you categorize that? What do, let's see. And Mirak, we'll get to your question in a second. Great question, by the way. Okay, here we go. So let's really focus on what a Schedule C is, okay? And then that will really help you understand what I really can use as my business expenses and deductions. So in order to get approved for this, you have to get a, you have to have a Schedule C, right? There's no way around this, okay? Um, all right, so let me, right, there's, can I zoom in? Yes. Can everyone see the screen? Okay. So let's focus on this part. It's profit and loss. If you don't know what profit and loss is, it's your income, which is the profit, and it's your expenses, which is your loss, which is your deductions. So if you go here, it says expenses and it says income. That's why we go off the line set. So let me do a demonstration, $50,000. That's how much I brought in, right? That's on my line seven. Um, let me bring up a calculator. All right, do you see this calculator? Nope, you don't, it's not on the screen. All right, let's do, okay, one second. Go right here. Okay, so I have $50,000, right? Okay, and I that's what I made on my Schedule C. If I divide that by 12, I approximately made about $4,100, right, a month. If I times that by 2.5, this is the loan amount that I will receive, which is this amount, right? Well, 40% of that I can use on business expense. Do I have to? No, because I can pay myself the full amount or more than that. So let's just say I want to use 40%. You times that by 0 0.40. The max that I can use, if I make up $50,000 income and I get about $10,000 back, I can only use $4,166.66 in a six months period in order for me to have it forgiven. So let's go back. What are all the things that I can get for forgiven? Well, it's the same things on your Schedule C that you can get deducted for your business. Same, same. We talk about Google a lot. Yelp advertisement, marketing, Facebook ads, Instagram ads. It falls in your Schedule C which is your deduction. So it's a write-off. It's something that can be forgiven at part of the 40%. So as your notary commission and fees, every year we have to pay the NNA of your loan signing agent. Um, every four years we have to pay your secretary of state. Those things are tax deduction. So therefore it is a business expense. Okay, let's drop down. We have insurance, your e &O insurance, your car insurance. Yep, car insurance. All right. Well, what else we have? Professional fees. It's tax season. I know you're paying a tax software, a tax preparer, an accountant, a CPA to do your taxes. That is, can be written off. Office expense for ordering things from as cases of paper, printers, things to that nature. All right, we have car maintenance. We can do that. 
we also have some other supplies. We have business taxes, okay? Uh, not business taxes in that way, taxes with your county, right? That you're planning if you're a business. Um, 1099s, you don't wanna abuse this part, but we are on the road all the time. We can write off some of the food that we end up on the road, but it has to be on the road, right? Not like, oh, I can just go to McDonald's and stuff. It has to be part of your business expense. Like you having a meeting with the bar at Starbucks and you wanted to buy the bar a drink, right? And it's on that. Well, that's a meeting, so you can write that off, right? All right, you're traveling, your mileage, um, your utilities. We talked about that. We narrowed down that. Um, and also your wages, which is your owner's contribution, the 60%. So this 60% will go here if I did my taxes for 2021. It'd be the 40% of 50,000. So I did 50,000 divided by 12 times 2.5, my loan amount, and then I'm gonna put times 0.60. I will put here the wages, if I did it, my taxes for 2021, $6,250 and zero one cents. That has to be reflected there. This is not the application for forgiveness. This is if you did your taxes in the future, what would need to show there because that's what you paid yourself, owners withdraw. Okay, so I hope that if you mirror your schedule C, what tip, what are the charter of accounts, right? What are your write-offs? Where are the things that I can really put? If you can put them in these buckets, then you ask yourself that. So if you ever have a question, can I go to my schedule C, can I put these business expenses in these buckets? Is it room for it? Then the answer is yes. It's going to be part of that 40%. If the answer is in your mind, you have any doubt, then it's not going to be part of the 40%. Some so real quick, let me ask uh, Marak's question here. So if it states, if I started my business in 2019 and did not generate any income due to expenses and startup, but began generating business in 2020, January, and made $50,000, am I eligible for PPP first draw and made over 50, uh, 50K as an LLC? So basically, I need to know what year would I have to start to apply for PPP? So your business had to be in business. Doesn't mean generating income, but in business hmm. before February the 15th, 2020. So I went to the IRS. I created an EIN number February the 1st, 2020. Okay, my business is in business, right? I have a EIN number. I'm a sole proprietorship. I want to go by Brene Mobile Notary, right? But it was hard for me to get myself off the ground, right? I needed a couple startup calls. So I was really trying to just figure it out. I didn't start making money until July. Am I still eligible? And after July, my income, I raised $50,000. But do I really qualify? Yes, because your business was incorporated or exists or EIN number that you can provide proof, right? And they can look it up, right? So you're eligible for that. Let's just say my business was established January the 1st of 2019. Am I eligible? Even I mean, I just had an amazing idea to start a business, but I had no idea it cost a lot and, you know, it takes a lot of marketing to get income. I didn't start making money until March of 2020, a year and three months. Are you still qualified? As long as you made more than $5,000 in 2020, 
they will be eligible and it's reported for the Schedule C, line seven. Yes, through our lender. Our lender only allows minimum of revenue on your Schedule C, $5,000, 18 capital lender. Awesome, Did I hope that helps out, Marat. And we offer, so the requirement is to have filed your taxes. So money will run out. If you haven't filed your 2020 taxes, I recommend you rushing to the tax preparer or rushing to TurboTax or rushing to a CPA to get your 2020 taxes filed because there is a lot of money on the table. You'll qualify for draw one. And if you have reduction of income per quarter, not per year, per quarter, not per year, you can be eligible for the same amount for the second draw before funds run out. The program is existing until May the 31st. However, $2 billion a day is going out. So if you calculate that, we have about 30 billion more left. Big numbers. So Renee, that pretty much wraps up our time. Uh, did you want to leave off with, a, how can they get in contact with you? How can they find you? So yes. So if you're interested and you want, you're not sure if you qualify, you just want a little bit more professional handhelding, you want to just speak to somebody about like, hey, can you just walk me through the application? Well, we provide group walkthroughs on Monday, every Monday at 5.30 Pacific Standard Time and 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. You can go to Zoom meetings and enroll yourself and we'll be happy to help you. On top of that, we have this little button down here, which is schedule me appointment with us or up here where it says schedule appointment and you can schedule an individual appointment for about 15 minutes with us for us to walk you through or answer any question that's pertaining to you. If you call us, you leave a voice message within 24 hours, our team will be able to assist you with any. We also ask if you want an immediate response, then just send us an email at info at notaryppp.com. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much. This was a very special edition. Again, ladies and gentlemen, we don't normally do this, but for Renee, I opened up my doors for her. So she and her business partner, Leslie, they were putting together, you know, this, this short event, a four week short event to kind of help a lot of notaries and business owners access the PPP loan. So to next week is the last episode. Let's just call it that, right? And um, what, what are we gonna be talking about next week? Next week, that's a really great question. If it's not to how to choose, um, what's like a perfect lender. I'm getting it right. We went over paperwork too, which is good. I know the do's and don'ts. We kind of covered that a little bit as well today. Um, how to choose the perfect lender. Um, and maybe why 18 capital? What are the benefits of 18 capital um, with being the perfect lender? We'll stress on that because there's a lot of lenders out there. Um, but why did we pick them and how they are going to benefit you through this process? Um, through the forgiveness process, um, through the application process, and if you have any questions, we'll really dive deep into that session in regards to that. And how to prepare the paperwork. Although we walk you through, there's paperwork that you have to have in place. And what are the five crucial documents that you need? Mm. 
And what do they need to look like? And how do they need to match your schedule C? Awesome, awesome. Well, that does it for us, ladies and gentlemen. Peace, love, and cash flow to you guys. We wish you guys the very best. Take care of yourself, stay healthy, and we hope to see you soon. Peace. Thank you for having me. Anytime, Thanks. Renee.